fast forward here to Toronto. Millions, millions of things happen in a, in a big city uh, of like Toronto and in and in, in our country. But yesterday, there was a media frenzy on uh, on Ganeshi, uh, something that I've never seen before in my entire life. Um, a paparazzi uh, that was uh, borderline psychotic. And I'm, I want to ask you, uh, Bill, did you see any of that? Did you see any of that uh, going on yesterday? No, I did not. I, I'm, I'm, I'm still in Florida, Frank, so I'm, I'm getting it firsthand from you. Okay, Tony, did you see anything like that yesterday when at College Park, the, the volleying and the rallying of the positioning of where they could be to get him coming out? I mean... I mean, it's it, it is a, a, a lewd, lascivious story, but it's not it's not a poignant story. Oh, it's not it's not something that's going to change uh, the history of mankind. It might change the history of violence between uh, uh, sexual abuse and sexual violence. It could be a precedent, but uh, it's unbelievable how the press, uh, the police, was extremely angry from what I saw. On how the how aggressive the press was. Did you see that, Tony? Uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, it was it's crazy. Yeah, and I mean, uh, you know, I mean, uh, it, like it's 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 wild that uh, this guy <laughs> understatement of the year is the guy's got issues <laughs> for sure. And it'll be interesting to see how uh, how this uh, unravels. Uh, Tony, like Tony, 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 I want to. We're in a country that's still democratic. I'm not taking a side. I really not. I you know, I I, I met the man once. I do not know the man. I've never discussed it with, with him in, in any way. I don't know the man to be that way. Uh, I, but what I'm saying to you, it's alleged that he, he has done these very vicious and sadistic, sadi and I emphasize the word sadistic, uh, things, but, but I'm not going to jump on a bandwagon. I think that uh, the lawyer is very bright in what she said, uh, that she's not going to... Uh, try the case in the media, which is a smart thing to do, and she's going to do it in a court of law, and the truth will come out. We have a great judicial system. We're very blessed in Canada. It's there, Sometimes, every once in a while, there, I know 100% of the time in Canada, there's law, but sometimes you get shocked. It's justice. So if he, if he is what he is, and he did what he did, he will be tried, and, and that'll come out. But now, to jump on the bandwagon with the press and all of the, the guy, everybody who's jumping on these, this bandwagon uh, to uh, crucify him and destroy him, isn't, guys, jump, Perry, you're a great journalist. Isn't not, is it in 2014, we're, we're around the corner from 2015, our country still isn't it innocent until proven guilty? Well, let me give you an expression that he who has not sinned cast the first stone. This guy's in the media. He pointed fingers at Rob Ford. How, what Rob Ford's conduct, how terrible it was. This is a guy who stood up on the throne and passed judgment on others. So you want to know why the media thrust down and came down upon him? Because this is the media coming down on the media. You saw it happen once before with Maria Shriver. How when she was a journalist would do stuff and all of a sudden she becomes part of the story and she says, oh, these media, man, they're ghouls, they're terrible. If you're part of the media, it's going to come back to you if something like this happens because you're not part of the media anymore. You are the story. And he is now the story. And you mentioned what happened in the United States. I don't know if in Canada we fully embraced what was happening because it was happening there. Meanwhile, Bill says he's in Florida. I don't know how much the story of Jan Gameshi is playing out down there, but here it's, fr if here it's front page yeah. news. The Toronto Star gave it a special section just on him. There were ads there. To, to, they had the money, actually, to, to do a, a special section on him. This is going to be, if you thought Rob Ford was a big deal, watch what happens with this now because this is bigger, way bigger than Rob Ford because this is a guy who thought he was better than everyone else. He was a very good interview, but that's all he was. He wasn't any more than that. He didn't save anybody's life. He's not a surgeon. He was a guy who was an interview. Nothing more than that. But he thought he was above everyone else in the way that he... Why do you say that? I'm not defending him. And here's something that really baffles me. That when I was watching, when I was watching this unbelievable paparazzi that were, uh, you know, 
falling and, and, and trying to position themselves to get a good shot of him. Here's the thing that baffled me. There was a colleagues there that he worked with, that worked alongside of him, that were right up his ass, that were trying to, you know, shoot him, not shoot him with a gun on a camera, right? Mm -hmm. and, and it was unbelievable to me that how, how they all turned on him. And here's something. Yesterday, the CBC uh, had a statement, and their statement was that nobody, no employees of the CBC were part of the, um, which was a little peculiar to me. Uh, the CBC made an announcement, a press release. Uh, the top guy in the CBC said, nobody in the CBC, any employees, are part of uh, the um, criminal investigation or are, n are not part of the complainants that went to the police registered a, a complaint where the police was charged it based on those complaints that's what it is right now whatever he may have done allegedly inappropriate within the halls of the CBC and there's been stories about it the complaints innuendo. yeah there's been innuendo yeah but the, the 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 information that has been gathered by the police has come from women that were not part of the CBC one woman in particular wanted her name put forward when in, when in fact everyone else's name has been shielded, they, they didn't want to put the names there. Here's a woman who actually said, put my name, I want everybody to know it's me. And again, you're asking me the question, Frank, and I said to you, why hasn't anybody been able to find him? In, in this world of the media, social media, no one was able to get a picture of him. So here was the first time Jan Gameshi was out in public and that's well, why the did, media... He did what he was supposed to do. He did what he was supposed uh, to do, but he is the story now and the media had the first... What I'm trying to tell you is that I'm, I'm pretty sure that legal counsel told him to drop the case with the CBC uh, and a legal counsel... Is, uh, this lady is a very sharp lady. She's an incredible, incredible lawyer. She's got uh, incredible acc accolades by her own peers. She's, uh, she's very sharp, very detailed. I was very impressed by her uh, brief statement, and uh, you know, and she, she did not lose her composure. And most people, and I would have lost my composure if I was part of that craziness. Uh, you know, they 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 were being pushed, they were being shoved. Everybody was rallying for position to get a good shot of him. He did not speak, um, and he was, you know, you could see that he was uh, incredibly shaken. Uh, he was not pompous. He was not. He had no smug face on. He was extremely uh, distraught. Uh, he's uh, become a social pariah, pariah in Canada, and especially in Toronto, where he was, uh, you know, the uh, the top uh, the top guy. He had a giant. What was it? Fifty foot, sixty foot banner on the CBC building on Front Street. Uh, you know, he w he was uh, the uh, the golden boy, the prodigal son of CBC. He was not only a prodigal son; he brought a lot of business into the CBC because his show was that's so why, popular. But that's why he was a prodigal son. Yeah. Don't become the prodigal son of a network if you're not bringing in Google's cash. His was. Ex I mean, I'm saying a guy like George Strombolopoulos was big. I don't know of anybody at the CBC that had a show I, that well, actually. I would say that there was two giant properties on CBC. George Strombolopoulos was not the biggest property, and I'm not dissing him. I, I like George. I'd say there was two big properties in the CBC. One was Hockey Night in Canada, and the other, and the other one was Mr. Gameshi. Those were the two main properties that brought massive revenues to the CBC. The third one would be uh, the, the Dragon's Den and possibly uh, the Coronation Street that for uh, 20 billion seasons, every season it's, would you like some tea? Want some butter on, on, on your crumpet? No. So if you want to follow that, that's fine. But those are the big. But Gameshi was definitely a big uh, property, a big uh, revenue uh, earner, and uh, so was Hockey Night in Canada. And and uh, you know CBC reacted fast. I think that uh, when the executives saw uh, his uh, defense, I think they crapped their pants. I think that the top guy said, "My God, we have." some serious issues here and and soon as they saw like I, I believe and I could be wrong and maybe Billy you could jump in because you're very perceptive I believe if he would have shown the CBC one of his home uh, tapes 
of uh, something that he believed was consensual, uh, I don't think this. I think the CBC would have stuck by him. I think once they saw that, they mean. were shocked and 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 implored, uh, by uh, the action that they 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 right away suspended him. And then then when the powers that be spoke and and uh, the, the top guys, you know the the, the big uh, guys at the top of the cheese uh, heap saw what he. And himself, they said, he's gone. What do you think, Billy? Well, exactly, and, I, and Barry knows this better than I. I've heard it probably from him. The star went to the CBC with what they had, and that's what precipitated the CBC. I think so. And considering looking into what Mr. Kamechi had been doing for a long time, and I, I, I think they were shocked when they saw what the star had. And the star said, we're going to write it. We hey, just want you to make a comment on it. What? And their comment was to fire him. I'm only going to say, because I wasn't there in the room, what I think happened was the evidence was put in front of the, uh, in front of the CBC. They were shocked, and they probably said, listen, just walk but away. But the evidence was not from the star. Let, let me, let's all he brought the, the evidence to them. He came in there with his lawyers. Yeah. He showed the he tape as there. if to say... He believed, he believed, he believed at that stage that this would exonerate him and say, you know what? Maybe I don't have conventional appetite for sexual foreplay or the way I have sex, but it's consensual, so it's not illegal. And I don't think it was the star that changed the CBC's um, uh, loyalty to Mr. Gameshi. The star was, had the story know, already. They were just waiting to push the button, and as soon as the CBC just, put it out there, just, they just hit the button. And the other thing, too, was You're beyond all this. Wrong. The star had innuendo. No, they had the they whole had story. Innuendo, and they had people uh, 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 that had come to the, uh, the star that did not want to be identified, that were talking about this man's sexual appetite, voracious sexual appetite for SNM or a violent type sex. So when, when the star started talking and they were skating in the peripheral uh, part of the story, they, they, uh, uh, Meshi went in there and said, it's bullshit. It's a jaded lover. It's somebody that's uh, got an agenda. Here's some tapes. When those guys saw it, this is what I'm, I've read, and this is my interpretation. When, when the executives who were absolutely prepared to fight for him, and be loyal to him before they saw the tape. I want to emphasize before they saw whatever evidence he gave them to defend himself. They were on his side. When, when they saw this, they freaked out. They freaked out. They didn't know what to do. So they passed the buck. They went up, to, they went up uh, four more floors. I'm being... I'm not saying four floors, guys. I'm being facetious. Right? Uh, they went up, they, they kicked it up to the top guy. Top, top people saw it. He said, he said, forget about this shit. Stop it. You know, the tipping point of all this is how naive this guy is. Because when it all came out, he goes on Facebook as if it's like only one person. Right. He didn't realize he effectively crucified himself by going to Facebook because that pissed off every, every woman who'd been affected by him. They all of a sudden came to the front uh, and said, it's not a jealous her. lover, it's a bunch of women. And he didn't know that. He's an incredibly naive person to think well, that it was a one naive. jealous Perry, woman. Perry, Perry, Perry's he's playing out a narrative is what he, he was did. doing. Perry, listen to me. He, was, he did a pompous act. And I guarantee you, that is the reason, that was the catalyst, in my personal view, for the PR agents to, to drop him. Because any good PR agent, any good lawyer will tell you, shut the fuck up. 